Well, we're so delighted to be joined now via our video hotline by Lindsay Meyer, a Notre Dame alumna who is part of the Silence Breakers, a group of courageous women who led the way in speaking out against sexual assaults and harassment. Because of their bravery, they were collectively named Time Magazine's 2017 Person of the Year. Lindsay, congrats on that tremendous honor, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Justine. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you studied here at Notre Dame, and what you're up to now? Totally. Uh, I grew up in the Minneapolis suburbs, so I guess that made me one of the few students that ended up unfazed by Indiana's winters. Um, I studied science business, and after I graduated in 2008, I moved to San Francisco 10 years ago. Um, today, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Batch. Batch is a next-gen retailer that is set up like your stylish friend's home. So we source products from online-only companies, local and global artists, designers, and makers. Everything is available to purchase. We run five collections a year called Batches, all in our 3,000-square-foot historic firehouse. So if you ever find yourself in San Francisco, please drop by and visit. Oh, definitely. And for the viewers who may not be as familiar with your story, can you talk about what specifically you were recognized for that earned you the honor of being named one of the Silence Breakers? Absolutely. So in 2015, while raising money for investors or from investors for another venture that I had started before Batch, um, I met an investor who took interest in, in what I was working on at the time. Unfortunately, it turned out that his interests were beyond the strictly professional, and I found myself in several compromising situations with him. And what was worse was that it turned out that his predatory behavior was serial and dated back to the past decade. So uh, a few of his victims started to organize in 2017, and I found myself faced with a choice of whether to go on record with my story. After some incredibly serious debate, I decided that it was the right thing to do. So I took my testimony to the New York Times, and in June 2017, it became a cover story. Um, there was a ton of follow-up coverage that resulted in places like USA Today, Fortune, Glamour, and I also had the opportunity to do primetime TV with Megyn Kelly last summer. So all in all, a very crazy year for me. No doubt took a lot of courage to come forward. What did it mean to you to be recognized by Time Magazine for those efforts? You know, being recognized in Time's Person of the Year issue is seen by many as an honor, although Time is really careful to never frame it that way. Uh, I sort of think of it as the resume enhancer that I never fathomed of receiving. But really, it's only recently that I've come to fully grasp the entirety of emotions that have been built up over the last year. And in fact, last week, uh, the New York Times was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for public service and journalism. And I really found myself coming more fully into the realization that my personal story of being harassed as a young female entrepreneur in Silicon Valley has really forever altered the arc of history. You know, as one of the, the, the women whose life was held in this incredibly delicate balance for weeks, days, hours, and seconds when there were so many risks, ostracism, online trolling, character attacks, being sued, and of course all of the financial responsibilities that would come along with that were most acute. I'm finally, um, about a year later, finding the opportunity to, to really breathe again. Um, and so, you know, people, of course, line up now to ask how I found the bravery to take my story public in June 2017 when so many few others had, had been willing to do something like that. And at the time, Harvey Weinstein was still at the helm of his media conglomerate, men in politics and fine dining, broadcasting, arts and culture. They still had their, their high places. Uh, and in a recent talk, I characterized my decision to go on record with the New York Times as calculated and strategic because I really wanted to interface with the news organizations of the highest journalistic caliber and hopefully the maximal potential impact. So for me, just last week watching the team uh, at the New York Times receive journalism's highest honor, the Pulitzer Prize, very much validated my instinct to go big, take on the risks, and really elevate the conversation from what was at the time more of a tech-focused misogyny problem um, to something that others around the world would emulate. And so that, to me, is really much more um, meaningful, I think, than any sort of public accolade and something that I'm still shocked by, uh, how widespread the impact has been. Lindsay, your story is truly inspirational. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us here on Notre Dame Day. We appreciate it.